It's Al here from Al's Geek Lab, and it's time for Ubuntu. Uh, I haven't talked about Ubuntu on this channel for absolutely freaking ages, as he says with his Windows desktop background in the background. Background in the background? Yeah, that's about right. Anyway, um, I, I, some of you know that I'm a big Linux fan, even <laughs> even though the Windows is, is right here. But um, big important thing is when Ubuntu really or canonical the company that own or produce ubuntu release their very latest lts or long-term support version and uh, that's just about to come up i got an email yesterday um i can't pronounce uh lukash's name did i say it right there luke lukash lukash's name lukash zemsak I, I probably screwed that really really badly i'm really sorry lukash lukash Anyway, I got this email yesterday and it tells me that they are pleased to announce, the Ubuntu team that is, the beta release of Ubuntu 22.04. I cannot believe that it's 22.04. I think the very first Ubuntu I had, what well, was the very first, I had the first Ubuntu ever and I went to a website called shipit.ubuntu.com and I got the original CD and it was Warty Warthog and that would have made it, I think, Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. 2004. So it was 04.04. And now it's 22.04. I'm getting old. <laughs> anyway, this email came in and it told me that it was coming out. And I thought, yeah, it's about time I downloaded this and saw what Ubuntu 22.04 looks uh, looks like. Because I haven't talked about Ubuntu forever. And... Um, yeah, so all of the usual um, different versions of um, Ubuntu are coming out. So like Ubuntu has the standard classic desktop release, but it also has Kubuntu, which is the KDE version. Lubuntu, it's the lightweight Qt desktop. And there's also Budgie as well, Ubuntu Budgie, there you go. Um, Kylin, which I haven't used because I'm not Chinese, can't speak Mandarin. Um, so... Sorry about that. Um, Ubuntu Mate is the Mate desktop. Uh, if you like that kind of older GNOME look, so like GNOME 2 look kind of thing. I think that's what Mate is all about. Ubuntu Studio I have used, which is which is pretty cool because it's basically like uh, an installation. I think, it, I think it might have KDE. I can't remember if it uses KDE. I think it is KDE. But anyway, the, the studio release, the whole point of it is it's got all these sort of like um, really good open source editing software like Ardor and Jack and um, uh, I can't forget what all the video editing software is called. I, I'm so bad. Anyway, but it's got a whole suite of software for video editing, audio editing, image editing, all that sort of stuff, all pre packaged in one distribution so that's quite good xubuntu which has got F xfce and blah 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 right so um that's the announcement there which i shall close down if you want to download the beta which i have and i'm going to show you on this very video if you want to download the beta head over to releases.ubuntu.com forward slash 22.04 uh, you can't get it yet on the main ubuntu.com website. You have to go to releases.ubuntu.com forward slash uh, slash 22.04. There you go. Right. Um, just a little bit of um, an update. Obviously, it still says beta, um, but it is pretty close to being released because the, the, the numbers always go like 22.04 and 22.10. So the next version after .04 will be 10, right? So 04, it's always the month that it's released in. So... Um, 04 meaning April, of course, and 10 being October. So if we look at the timeline here for um, the release of Jammy Jellyfish, <laughs> they always come up with some crazy ass names, but really, um, you, know, you can see some, this has got planned and potentially disruptive archive wide activity. I don't know what archive wide means, but anyway, um, these are important things, right? Important decisions made in the life of the delivery of 
the uh, the release. And if you look at this, PHP 8.1, so it's going to ship with PHP 8.1. That's cool because if you're using it on a server, you know, PHP 8 is like, yeah, well, I mean, that's a whole different ball game for, for PHP. PHP 7, in fact, was a whole different ball game from, from everything that came before it. But um, PHP 8, that, that's going to, it's going to break some things that I use, I think, but um, maybe not. Maybe, it, but it, apparently, it's a very good uh, version of PHP. It's like the best yet, and people might come back to PHP. We'll see. Um, Open SSL three, Ruby three, System D. Ugh. Um, ugh. Uh, DPDK. It sounds like a virus. I don't. I don't know what that is. Oh. Um, Python three point one. Glibc gnome forty two um, dot zero. So it's going into into that. So March twenty fourth. So that's already happened. So basically, we're at um, April the first today. This is not an April Fool's joke. This is really happening. And the twenty seventh point of of twenty seventh week. So basically, we're looking at a result um, a release between somewhere in the region of April 14th and April 21st. So yeah, scheduling a release date of April 21st. So around there, if all goes well. Um, so this this beta is basically like a, a, a UI freeze. So um, there, there's not gonna be that much in the way of functional functional changes that are going to come after this. Like the beta that you see today is going to be pretty much what it'll look like when it's finished. It's going to have some bug fixes in it. Um, I dare say before now in the 21st of April. So really that's all the developers will probably be concentrating on is bug fixes, making things work. All right, so I have downloaded it from the releases webpage and um, it's, a, it's a, what was it? It was quite, it's quite a big download actually. It was like, 3.9 gig or something like that. It's huge. Anyway, um, I will spin up VirtualBox and uh, see if I can make a make a new VM. Uh, new, press new. Okay. Um, I'll call it Ubuntu 22.04. Yep, sure. H drive. I don't want two gig. That's miserly. We want let's let's give this thing um, let's give it let, let's give it eight gig let's give it eight gig of RAM that's quite a lot hopefully that's fine create a virtual hard drive ten gig as well that's very miserly I think we can we can afford it we can afford it uh, forty five gig how about that whoa it's huge um, okay and then what we do is we pick out the ISO that I've downloaded already so if i go to storage and i go to this here this is the little um cd and i click this here and then i choose a disk file and i go to where i've downloaded the iso in my downloads folder click click uh, you can click live cd if you want it's not really that important i think it works either way but okay and that's probably all you need to do to get it set up like that's that's it so i'll just press start now on my little virtual box and hope that it brings me up the installer okay oh yes this is where i point out the fact that they've gone with this new logo <laughs> now um here's the new logo isn't isn't that frightfully awful i mean I, I don't want to dwell on it but what the hell is this it's not it's not nice why you do this why you do this canonical i don't like it take it back <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> i don't know what it is with organizations it doesn't matter what you are it could be Firefox, it could be Chrome, Google, it could be Microsoft, anybody out there. It seems like these days it is just a fashionable thing to do to, to keep changing your logo for absolutely no reason. There was nothing wrong with the logo in the last the last iteration of the Ubuntu logo. I think this is its third or fourth iteration now. But anyway, there you go. They've changed the logo. There's nothing we can do about that. It's not going back. This is... um. 
this is taking a long time, isn't it? This is slow. Aha! Here we go. Yeah, definitely. That's like um, usually in a virtual machine when I've spin up a VM of Ubuntu, it starts up faster than that. So I don't know. Maybe I'm just um, imagining things, but um, hey. What? That's new. <laughs> okay. Right, so straight into the installer, no mucking around. Obviously, if you press try Ubuntu, you can try Ubuntu. It'll take your desktop. Uh, but I'm just going to go English install Ubuntu. Let's see what happens. Um, the last time I tried the installer of a previous sort of beta version, and it was kind of at feature freeze, so it was supposed to be stable. Uh, the last time I did this, it um, it failed miserably. Um, I don't know why the continue button is like not quite in the screen. It looks like it can't, uh, the, the installers, I think the installer is updated by the way. Um, so I'm going to install the, all the extra hardware, nasty licensed proprietary stuff as well. Normal installation. Yep. Cool. Okay. Yeah. It's definitely, definitely outside of the probably 800 by 600 or 1024 by 768 resolution. I don't know if I can make that any better because it's probably not installed the the drivers or whatnot yet. So um, I don't know whether that's on purpose or not. But anyway, there you go. Um, so it's a preparing Ubuntu drivers. Obviously, I'm not going to make you watch the whole installation of Ubuntu because um, that would be very boring for you. So I will just uh, use the power of um, video and speed this up for you um, when it gets to that point. Now, erase disk and install Ubuntu. Obviously, if you've got a, another system, you can install side by side. You can do multi-boot and all the rest, but we're just going to put it on this little VM. So um, I should just be able to choose the most basic option, erase disk and install Ubuntu. So far, so normal. Nothing, nothing uh, untoward there. The time's wrong. Oh, yeah, we go. Maybe it's going to choose the right time zone. I just noticed that at the same time. There we go. Sixteen twenty-seven. That's right. Yes, yeah, it is. Sixteen twenty-seven. Okay. Okay. Owls Geek Lab. What's this called again? It's called Jammy. Really, really strong password. All right off it goes installing files now uh i do like the um i do like the art like some of the some of the artwork in the previous distributions of ubuntu has been particularly nasty i haven't i haven't enjoyed it but the 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 artwork of this jellyfish it's kind of nice gotta see yeah i don't think yeah it needs a higher resolution screen, so maybe that's something that they need to work on. And yeah, I can just get away with it. Um, obviously, the server release of Ubuntu is coming out as well. So, um, server release for me has been a solid, solid workhorse for uh, God only knows how long, forever, like a long, long time. I've been using Ubuntu LTS server since probably 14, 1404, I want to say. Definitely 1604 and definitely 1804 and now 2004. So this is the this is the long anticipated server release. So I'll probably upgrade to this server release at some point, but with it having PHP 8, that's quite a big jump, isn't it? All right, well, um, whilst the install's um, doing its thing, I thought I'd pop over to omgubuntu.co.uk. If, um, if you've never been to OMG Ubuntu, they're a great source for all things news in Ubuntu world. Um, so I'm just going to uh, read this whilst we're doing the install. So, yeah, um, it says... Um, this is quite interesting. It says, so a quick overview for LTS upgraders. Ubuntu now uses Wayland as a default displayed server, even for NVIDIA users. 
there's a new horizontal workspace switcher and a horizontal app launcher that lets you rearrange apps. A slew of new settings, Active Directory support. I didn't, I didn't know that Active Directory support was a new thing. Like I thought Active Directory support's been around for, for freaking ages. You just install Samba, right? Really? That's a new thing? I mean, it's good. It's great. It's fantastic. I mean, if you can join a domain and, you know, act like a domain machine, then more power to it. But I just, yeah. huh? I don't know. New firewall backend. So does that mean it's replacing um, UFW? Because UFW, the back, or the, well, depends on which way you think about it. So the back end to UFW was IP tables. Um, but UFW was the command line interface, which made um, by app, IP tables a lot easier. IP tables itself is a bit tricky. There's a lot of commands to and flags to remember when you're configuring IP tables. So UFW just... Like you could just basically say allow this port, deny that port, and that's basically it. So it made the maintenance of a simple firewall, not simple, very easy, very easy, even from the command line, really easy. Um, so what else does it say? It's a mix of GTK4 and GNOME 42. No, Ubuntu 22.04 includes the bulk of the recent GNOME 42 release, plus a number of apps and libraries carried from GNOME 40. Why this mix? GNOME 42 features a lot of GTK4 and lib adwiata, I don't know what that is, ports of many core apps. Ubuntu didn't feel like they'd get enough testing before its April deadline, so held back. So this is kind of like a mishmash of two uh, thingies then. Uh, the good news is a good chunk of GNOME Shell 42 is included in 2204, including an updated GNOME Shell desktop its new screenshot tool, a backport of the new privacy panel in the settings app and the latest version of the Nautilus file manager. Um, so you can see the, the new theme looking looking swell here. It's got a, the light and the dark, obviously, I mentioned just a moment ago. Um, the Yarrow GTK theme icon set and GNOME shell themes adapt to changes in GNOME 42. For example, the shell theme no longer uses callouts in applet pop-ups. Applets are more compact and the accent color Ubuntu uses is reduced to a single color, which you can change. Though more on that in a moment. So it's got a brand new screenshot UI, user interface, um, which can be accessed by pressing the print screen button at any time. Hallelujah. You know, it's nothing worse than forgetting what the 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 shortcut is to your screenshot tool right it in windows it's uh, windows key shift and s and i've just remembered that through trial and error but you know i can't remember what it is in in ubuntu anymore and i vaguely remember what it is on the mac and when you go through all three systems that makes life even harder so there you go um the old standalone screenshot tool is no longer installed don't care don't care so proposed changes at a glance are GNOME Shell 42, updated apps, obviously, Linux kernel 5.15 LTS, Mesa 22, new multitasking options in settings. I wonder, I wonder what that is. New multitasking? Multitasking? What is this? MS-DOS? Uh, new Ubuntu dock options and settings. I'll have a look at that. That sounds good. Um... And then uh, refreshed GTK and shell theme accent colors. Additionally, Ubuntu is the, the first version of Ubuntu designed to run well on the Raspberry Pi 4 2 gig model, an impressive engineering feat, uh, which is great, actually. That's really good because um, I know plenty of people out there, including myself, who've got Raspberry Pi 4. And, you know, we, we use Raspbian quite happily, but, you know... Uh, it's always nice to have a, a daily driver, which is Ubuntu, which is, yeah, it's always, always nice. Okay, there it's installed the OS, so I'll press the restart button and hopefully it'll boot right into it. So so this, this article from OMG Ubuntu came out only nine hours ago, so this is um, keeping it real up to date for you. I'm just going to see if that um, remove disk, yeah, I think that's what I need to do. Press enter. Okay. Let's do a little bit of the rebooting.
Oh, it's slow. So slow. Why so slow? What is it doing? Is this is this a Wayland thing? Just it definitely feels slower than what it used to feel like. I'm sure like it used to just boot into the desktop in next to no time. So I'm definitely feeling sluggish here. And I didn't give it crappy specs either. Hard drive lights flickering away still. Here we go. Oh, desktop. Moment of truth. Hey! Shazam! Still not a usable desktop yet. There we go. Getting there. It's thinking about things. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Right, okay. See if I can increase the resolution here a bit. Yeah. Shazam. Make these changes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lovely. And let's just make sure that um, the software, software app store, or whatever it's called these days, is 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 working because the last time I opened the app store, Ubuntu software, is that what it's called now? Software? Just software. Just literally software. Okay, anyway, um, last time I used it, it, it broke. <laughs> it broke heinously. Uh, anyway, I'll let that do its thing in the background. Um, I'm going to go through this stuff here. Um, see, what, see what it all looks like, right? So, um, network, let's see if there's anything in there. Nothing looks interesting in there. Bluetooth, no, don't care. Background. I do, I do actually like that, that, um, Jellyfish. I think it's really nice. I'll show you that again. It's nice. 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 I like that. I don't know why this home thing's over there. Go away. Go over there. Snap. Um, cool. Yeah. And you get some other ones as well. You get a nice reflection sunset thing. And yeah. Lovely. Good. That's it's nice to see. You get a selection of backgrounds and wallpapers um, right out of the right out of the box. So that's good. Um, appearance. The, by the way, I've got to say, very sluggish. Everything so far, really sluggish. Did you see how long it took? You know, that was like three seconds. One, two, two seconds there, and it already got into it. Very slow. Very, very slow. Don't know why it's so slow. Maybe this is just a VM. Maybe I need to install the, the tools or whatever, but it just seems to be really sluggish, and that's not normal for Ubuntu feel it'd be running faster than this, so I'm not sure what's going on. Okay, so let's put the dark theme on. I believe I believe I've clicked it. I'm just waiting for it to No. Nope. Hey. <laughs> Goodness me that took an age. Alright. So yeah, so there's the dark theme. Um so there's a lot of people who are loving the dark theme these days. I'm really not fussed either way to be honest with you. And you can go through these different shades of color. So if you like a more sort of um, monochromic green sage, it's called, um, then everything kind of turns into that. So that you can see the little highlights there on the home folder. See how they kind of have changed as well. So there's a, a nice attention to detail there. It's not just a, a little bit here and there. The, the colors have swapped almost all over the place and the, the gradients are nice and so forth so I'll do that for this more um, old school green see if I get yeah, so slow so so slow yeah so you got the, the green there okay so I'll put it back to the Ubuntu color for now keep everything stock Um, position of the new icons on the desktop in the bottom right. That 
feels strange. Would have thought it would be top left. Um, the size of the icons, you can change those. Auto hide the dock, that's cool. Um, has it always done that? Not sure. I'm forgetting things now. The configuration of the dock behavior, you can include unmounted volumes and network volumes. Show the trash. I think that's always been there for, well, for a long time anyway. Notifications. Again, this is pretty much the same uh, as before. There's do not disturb mode as well, obviously. You can go through searching, multitasking. This is the multitasking thing that I had no idea what this actually means. So let's just uh, look at this. So hot corners. Okay, well, we know what hot corner is. So touch the top left corner to open the activities view. So did that actually apply? Touch, touch the top left corner to open the activities view. Touch the corner. Don't really know what what's happening there. Um, if you click on the activities button, you see this um, sort of well activities view, and you can you can change between tasks uh, that way um, which I, I mean obviously it's an iteration on it, the 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 activities view of, of past um, it's quite nice I quite like the the rounded edges I quite like the minimization of the you know the different sizes of the the apps there and of course you can slide along and get to your second desktop or third desktop or whatever um, from there quite quite quickly so that's that's good, although I, I'm not seeing this hot corner thing working. Um, maybe I'm missing something there. I'll switch that off. Active screen edges. Drag windows against the top left and right screen edges to resize them. Drag windows against the top left and right. So top. There we go. So that maximizes it. Yep, that's kind of what I expected. And then the right should snap it to the right and so forth. Yep. So I think that's always been a that's been a feature for a long time i think but maybe that's just something that you haven't been able to switch off pretty sure that's been there for a while it's certainly in windows 10 um dynamic workspaces removes empty workspaces yep that's fine um workspaces on primary display only workspaces on all displays yep okay that's cool don't think that's been in there all this all this time Application switching, include applications from all workspaces. Yeah, all right. Fair enough. All right, so it's it's nice that it's got this in here because um, I wouldn't have called it multitasking, but I guess maybe it's a better thing to call it than other things, maybe. Um, and then here's the whole list of applications, so kind of like you have on um, iOS and Android. Uh, control panels you've got the applications individual settings as well so they're all in here and uh, you can see the sort of software that's that comes with Ubuntu 2204 kind of in here a lot of the settings are in there so the application settings in there privacy you know the sort of stuff that you'd expect Connectivity checking is used to detect connection issues and helps you stay online. If your network communications is being monitored, it could be used to gather information about this computer. My big brother is watching you. Interesting. Um, displays. Yeah, display. That's pretty normal. Removable media, color, blah, blah, blah. Okay, the rest looks pretty standard stuff. So, yeah, I think I've shown you pretty much all of that that I can actually show you. Um, so... Ubuntu 22.04 on, on the surface um, is looking like it's yet another just iterative generation um, built upon previous generations of Ubuntu. Nothing wrong with that. Um, they've This is the stable release after all. This is what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to be stable and not blow anybody's socks off, but, um, you know, still introduce very... Um, you know, very clear cut, um, clear cut aspects. So you know, I think it's um, it's probably holding up 
that part of the bargain in doing what it's supposed to do. Let's see if PHP is installed. It's not, but it looks like it's PHP 8.1. So that'll be interesting. Yeah. So there's going to be a whole bunch of packages in there that you're going to have to check against the package numbers. If you're running server edition, for example, you know, if you're running 20, uh, 2020.04 and you're upgrading to 2022.04, um, you know, I think running PHP 7.2 or 7.3 in that. So upgrading to PHP 8.1, um, how big of a change is that going to be? How big of a change is Python 3.3 or 4 or whatever it is? How, all, all these things have got to be considered. Um, like the the upgrade from 2018 to 2020.04, those two, the LTS, they changed MySQL in a big way. The the, the version was uh, a breaking change. So you couldn't just MySQL dump your databases anymore and, and move them across. You basically, uh, you had to do a lot more manual intervention. So there were things like that that you really needed to be aware of. Whereas in prior LTS upgrades, you could just iteratively upgrade and everything would be fairly fine. You could just to one one machine over here, copy your data across, even R sync your data across, and everything would be fine. But this one, um, obviously, there are going to be some changes in there as well, and some some things may break, and some things may be absolutely fine. So just uh, just bear that in mind. Um, yeah. So that's that's a very very first glance at um, Ubuntu twenty two o four, Jammy. It's um, it's yeah, it's it's a lot slower than what I thought. I hope that's um, that's just my VM just playing up or something. Um, let me know what you think of Jammy in your uh, in the comments below, and um, um, don't forget to check out the website www.alsgeeklab.com. Uh, check me on Facebook, search for Al's Geek Lab, uh, Instagram at Al's Geek Lab. Twitter at Al's Geek Lab and of course you can get me on Patreon and of course that means you want to sponsor me, uh, become a patron, donate some cash, make this this channel even bigger than it ever has ever been because your your um, your donations go straight back into the channel. I make more content, it spurns me on, it helps me buy lots of retro equipment and fiddle with it and then make videos for you. So all of those things, it's all it's all part of the loving, right? So um, there you go. Um, yeah, what, and, and subscribe and like. Because if you don't and coming through the camera, I'm going to come and get you. Right, anyway, that's been me. I'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye for now.